Thank you everyone for joining us for this broadcasting of our worship service here at Freedens. These are unprecedented times that we are facing, but I'm so glad that we have a means in our society now to remain connected through social media. So I'm glad that you're joining us. A big shout out and thank you to the Wagner production team for making this all possible. I would like to just highlight to everyone that in accordance with the Center for Disease Control and the policy that they have set, the building will be closed throughout March 30th and we are going to be playing everything by ear to see how long this social distancing will last. We will be in touch with ev everyone via our Facebook page as well as our website and also perhaps through a mailing so everyone has the information that they need. So during this time, our roast beef dinner has been canceled. The candy making is on hold for at least two weeks until further notice. And like I said, we will let you know when we have the deep cleaning done and when we will open our doors again. I would like to also announce to you that our Christian sympathy is extended to the family and friends of two dear longtime members of Freedens, Evelyn Schaefer and also Elaine Weiser passed away this week and entered eternal life. So please, please, I ask you to remember their families and their friends during this most difficult time, especially as we remain physically separated I'm hoping that you can be in touch with them through some phone calls or some cards or text messages. And I thank you for your, kind, your kindness that is, will be shown. Let us now begin with our opening confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. 
Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. You shall anoint for me the one who I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked to Elab and, he, and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and he brought him in. Now he was ready and he had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then sent out and went to Ramah. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 23, read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 8 through 14. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to the ninth chapter of St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, 
I am the light of the world. When Jesus had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. The man kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we are all too readily aware, tragedy can strike quickly and capriciously. In the blink of an eye, before we can make sense of it, our lives and our worlds can be radically changed. As the Reverend Bill Buchnight rightly observes, as a nation, we've been living with that awful reality since 9-11. Thousands of people killed for no reason by complete strangers who assumed somehow in their mind that they were doing good for the world. Then, of course, there are natural disasters, tsunamis, earthquakes, floods, tornadoes, which wreak their destruction. Add to that list traffic accidents, terminal diagnoses, diseases, and as we as a congregation have come to know and feel, unexpected deaths. If you have somehow avoided great tragedy in your life, be thankful that you have been spared. And now, as we all know, as a community, as a nation, as a world, we are dealing with this pervasive COVID-19 virus and the uncertainty that it brings to our everyday lives. I think the majority of people have asked this question at one time or another or in one form or another. Most of us accept, sometimes in the deep, dark recesses of our minds, that God did not cause some particular tragedy. The greater problem for most believers, however, seems to be this. Why does God allow awful things to happen? What is the greater purpose for such pain and suffering? Jesus' disciples asked that question over two centuries ago. They met a man one day who had been born blind. And in the first century, it was the thought that anyone's suffering was a result of sin. So the disciples asked Jesus, who sinned in this case? Was it the blind man himself or was it his parents? Tell us why, Jesus, tell us why this man has been born blind. Now we are smart enough to realize that some things that happen are a direct result of our own actions. For instance, if we drive too fast in rainy weather, there is a greater chance that we will lose control of our vehicle and have an accident. If we spend a lifetime without exercising or being mindful of what all we put in our mouths, we certainly will increase our chances of being afflicted with heart disease, high blood pressure, high cholesterol levels. If we vape, or if we smoke a couple of packs of cigarettes a day, the risk of cancer is because of us and our actions, not because of God. Again, as the Reverend Buchnight observes, the problem comes when we reap what we have not sown. 
why, he questions, did Cantor Fitzgerald, a leading treasury bond brokerage, lose the majority of its employees in the terrorist attacks while other businesses lost so little? Why did that treasured, creative friend who never smoked at all develop lung cancer? Why do many killers roam free? And why is justice so slow? In most cases, we have no answers to our questions. Our faith in Christ does not prevent tragedy from happening, nor does it grant us some kind of special favor from the Divine One. It's like the priest who went out golfing with his rabbi friend one late afternoon. He was putting particularly well that day, and the rabbi took note that he was crossing himself before each shot. Finally, the rabbi said to his friend, would it be all right if I made the sign of the cross before I putt? Sure, came the reply, but it won't do you any good. Why not, asked the rabbi. Because, said the priest, you can't putt. The truth expressed by the priest is that you can go through all the religious exercises that you want, but none of them will bless you with a charmed life or somehow render you immune to heartbreak or tragedy. So then if God doesn't promise us safety, what does God promise? God promises that God's grace will be sufficient for our needs. The Lord promises that nothing in all creation will be able to separate, separate us from divine love. And no matter bad, no matter how bad something may be, God promises that if we share that in faith, our burden will be lighter. The answer to our question, why, won't necessarily be given. Therefore, maybe we need to stop asking that question. Instead, a better and more faithful question to be asked is this. What good can this situation possibly produce? I have a cousin, a little bit younger than me, who years ago was in a pretty terrible car accident after a drunk driver slammed into her, causing her enough physical injury that she missed a whole semester of college while she was rehabilitating. And though it was certainly a challenge to heal mentally as well as physically, she and her mother, my aunt, became ardent advocates of the MAD organization, Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. Now understand, she didn't endure injuries so that she, be she could become a voice for others. Rather, my cousin became an advocate because of the accident. There's a big difference there. Jesus' response to his disciples' question, what good can come out of this tragedy, was this. That the blind man would be a living demonstration of the power of God. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus healed him, and the story of that healing has been told throughout history, even to our day. And I'm sure it will be told until Christ comes again. When life deals us lemons, and we know it will, we can plague ourselves mercilessly with the question of why, or we can approach God and ask for strength and help as we deal with our condition so that we may find a measure of hope in our day-to-day -day lives and that somehow we can use our situ situation to serve God and others. Please be well, my dear members. Know that you are being thought of and prayed for. 
And may God's peace be with you all. Amen. Let us now profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, open the hearts of the church and the world to all who testify to your deeds of power. Raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Provide rich soil for crops to grow. Bring rain to lands suffering drought. Protect hills and shorelines from damage caused by erosion. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Frustrate the efforts of those who would seek to cause violence or terror. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day, especially those in the medical front lines who work exhaustingly to give aid to those in these unprecedented times dealing with the coronavirus. Accomplish, we pray, healing through the work of doctors, nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, techs, and EMTs, and all who tend to human bodies. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for your saints, especially our two faithful members, Elaine Weiser and Evelyn Schaefer, who shared their lives and love with us. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace to serve the Lord in love. Amen. Thank you everyone for tuning in during this time. Please stay well, be well, take all the precautions that you need so that we can join together again, hopefully in a few weeks. Know that you are only as far away as my thoughts, my heart, and my prayers. God bless you all. <laughs>